I don't even know he that. Said I he's never film. even really uh, bench pressed. I've never before. done a bench press. I have. Um, if, I mean, basically, if I if I look at a bench press, my my chest grows, my proportions would be completely off. Uh, I've really? never never done a bench. I've never done bench press. <laughs> you don't do it either. Uh, I really like. Uh, All right. I don't train basically this portion of my body. Do you do any dumbbell benching though? No, I don't oh. train my chest. I've never, I've, I swear on my Aren't life. Aren't you tempted to like touch his pec? Because it looks like there's something. <laughs> it looks, no, 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 no. no. I'm, Flex it real quick. I've never. So, uh, some of the rules for bench pressing is just, since you haven't done much of it at all, just find a grip that's comfortable. I don't really care where you put your hands. That goes for anybody who's watching right now. Some people like to have their hands wider. If going wider, uh, allows your shoulder to not hurt as much, then go ahead and go wider. Or if going in closer, allows your shoulder not to hurt as much, go in closer. Kind of do whatever you have to do. Just make sure you have an even grip. One way we do that is we'll do thumb grip away from the smooth part of the bar. Smooth part of the bar is right here. This is called knurling right here. We'll go thumb grip away, or sometimes we'll go pinky on the power rings here, okay? So whatever grip you wanna pick is up to you. We do like to squeeze the bar firmly. There's some commonalities between bench press, squat, deadlift, and really any of the movements that you end up doing in the gym, whether it's overhead press, just any kind of barbell movement, you do want to squeeze the bar firmly. Uh, when you squeeze something firmly, I can show you with Andrew here, go ahead and shake my hand and just squeeze as hard as you can. You see how a whole arm structure, everything tightened up. And when you really try to put as much pressure as possible, your whole neck and everything, your whole body will tense up. If we were trying to do like a grip test, and he registered, I don't know, 400 pounds of pressure. Uh, you would see like when he came back, he would try to squeeze with his entire body. When we squeeze the barbell, we wanna to try to squeeze it with everything that we got because we're trying to initiate all the way from our fingers all the way down through our toes. We want everything to be involved in a bench press. So as I lay back, I'm gonna grab the bar. I'm gonna grab the bar firmly on all the exercises, bench, squat, deadlift. We normally, under most circumstances, want to have our chest kind of in an upward position. The reason for that is we want to have a neutral spine during the actual exercise itself. So when once you get under load in a squat or once you get under load in a deadlift, once you start to pick those weights up, a lot of times you'll tend to round over. You might, might round over like a sumo deadlift or conventional deadlift, you might round over a bit. But if you start in a really neutral, strong position or what feels like arched or what feels like having your chest up, when you go to pull that weight, your back might shift just a bit, but it'll still be in a good, strong, neutral position. When our back is in a neutral position and our head is in a neutral position, it's not too far down, it's not too far up, we're able to express the most amount of strength through our extremities. For this case, it's gonna be our arms. So what to do with our arms? You're gonna take the weight out, you wanna pull weights out of the rack, out of the bench rack, and not push them out of the rack. If you go to push them out of the rack, you will push your shoulders here. This is a really bad way to try to bench press because now it's gonna be hard to organize my body, especially if the weight's heavy. If the weight's light, no problem. I could just readjust. It won't matter much, but if it's two, three, 400 pounds or whatever your max is, it's gonna be hard to kind of shuffle into position. So we wanna pull the weights out of the rack. I'm gonna show you how we set our shoulders beforehand. Pull the weights out of the rack. As we bring the weight down, you wanna bring their weight down to about your sternum. Some people like to bring it a little bit lower. Some people like to bring it a little bit higher. Kinda of depends on the athlete and the person. For some people, they may have a little bit of a distended belly and they like the shortest distance and they'll bench press off of the raised up belly. It's part of the reason why some of the biggest bench pressers in the world kinda of have a power belly sitting there. It shortens that range of motion a bit. We wanna get an arch in the bench press and this is always a little area of controversy. We're not trying to arch the lower back. We are arching aggressively though through the upper back and we are trying to uh, take our shoulders and if you were, <clears throat> you wanna take your shoulders and really try to screw them into the bench. We do the same thing on the squat and the same thing on the deadlift. We wanna to try to screw our feet into the floor again because we wanna to try to be as stable as we possibly can. There's a stance for every single sport that you ever do and this is a powerlifting stance for a bench press or the beginning parts of it. So you wanna kinda of screw your shoulder blades into the bench press, chest is up, okay? Then we're gonna pull the weight out of the rack and then we're gonna bench press. And when you bench press, you want, the, you want to stack your bones. You want your wrist and fist over top of your elbows. 
So you're gonna bring the elbows in close to your body. We don't wanna be out here because this is a lot of extra range of motion. And as we come down with the bar, we'll be in the least advantageous position, which is with our uh, elbow back behind our body. And the elbow will literally, literally be less behind your body if it's kind of down and in. We can also protect our shoulder with our lat. If Nsema can turn around here and put his arms in like a bench press position. As he goes to tuck, you see that we got lat on tricep. We understand that not everyone's gonna have this development, but this is crucial and important to help build strength because this is another area where we can sneak in getting some leverage. Some people will do it through muscle, through getting jacked like Nsema has. Other people might do it through being a little bit heavier. And some people might do a combination of the two, being fat and jacked at the same time. That's he's, he's got a side delt. Do that one more time. His rear delt looks like a side delt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, we, we don't understand what's going on. We're still trying, we're running but some let, tests. Yeah. We're trying to figure out, we're trying to figure out what the hell's going on with that guy. But I love pointing out, <laughs> but I do love pointing out that you're natural because I think one thing, and we can have this discussion later, is that yeah. people really do, I think, start thinking about hormone augmentation way too early. hundred uh, percent. Um, you know, yeah. and Nasima and is proof that it's not necessary. Now his genetics are, are favorable for, for strength and size and, and athletics, but it's, there are ways to develop, to hit a, a tremendous potential and then, then consider that if, if, and when that's appropriate. Right. Yeah. But I think it, it is remarkable, you know, um, I've never seen a, a side delt put in the place of the rear delt. So that's, uh, <laughs> It's, it, but, it, it's, it's mind boggling. And yeah. it's also really cool to see the progress that he's made too. I yeah. know, I know we keep like giving him props or we're giving him shit. We're doing like one. both same time. We just like to, uh, embarrass the hell out of him as much as, as much as possible. But I've been witness to it. I've seen him firsthand make a lot of progress. Uh, I've seen, you know, when you came into the gym and you were deadlifting about how much were you deadlifting when you came in? It's like 620, 625. 620. And then he easily put, I mean, 755, it looked like when he did it in the competition, Looked like he could have done like three reps with it. I mean, it was just, wow. it was kind of, uh, kind of ridiculous. And that's where people would say, oh, well, he must have done, you know, he, on. he, he got himself big and he got himself into a position that probably, probably didn't feel great being like 260 because you're used to being leaner. I was 272 at the <laughs> peak when I pulled 270. How much do you weigh now? Yeah. It's a great, great weight for you. Yeah, right. Yeah. You find that sweet spot too, where it's the right weight for you and, and that there's so many factors it's related to height joint size the sports you've done whether or not you have you know big thick knees or or smaller joints like i did you have to find that that sweet spot between strength athleticism health aesthetics like all of those have to converge and and that's a you know and that's another reason to not go super extreme in one direction well mark you can talk about that i mean you went for full strength you were very you were shaped like you were complete like <laughs> like if you see two dogs it was almost like, like yeah like if you see uh you know like a bulldog a bull mastiff right and then you see a, a greyhound those are two very different right, creatures right. but mark is going to have the advantage and the experience that a lot of human beings have not had had in their lifetime of actually feeling like a different species yeah. within species yeah. um yeah so who knows what's next i mean ryan hall the runner he ran for stanford he was a ter terrific runner and now he's gotten really into weight training so he's pulling yeah. 500 pounds and running sub five minute miles um That's yeah impressive. and his wife is an is a olympic level runner also he's he's doing incredible things now with his strength and he's gone from literally looking like a whippet to being a larger animal who knows maybe someday you'll be uh you and uh, Elliot Kiskoji or whatever the the marathoner. If anyone could beat the marathon record, it'd be Mark. I, yeah. I love I love running that. Yeah. So far, I've I've been really liking it a lot. But one more comment on him uh, before we get back into bench pressing here is uh, you know seeing him go from that 272 down to what he is now 242. It didn't happen overnight or 240. It didn't happen overnight. It's he's been working on it for a long time. Plus with hours and hours and hours and hours of jujitsu. Um, and the lifting's always been consistent, so that's never been a thing for him. But you've been at jujitsu for what five years now? Six years, come December. Six years. He was only like a. He was, I think you were a year in, maybe when we met. No, when I met, I hadn't started jujitsu. Ah. Or maybe I started jujitsu for like the past five or six months, um, but I was very new to it at that time. Very new. So yeah. him going from the two seventy two that he was at to him where he is right now, I think people. They see his Instagram, they see his TikTok, and they're like, holy shit, like, that's awesome that he's, like, that lean and that jacked. But he's been lifting since he was a kid. 
And then on top of that, even in the five or six years that I've been around him, the progress that he's made has been insane. All right, back to bench pressing. So we're gonna lay back on the bench. We're actually gonna get into actually showing you the bench. I promise we're gonna do it right now, right here. So we lay back, get an even grip. For me, this has always been my strongest grip. Not sure why, but it's what's always worked out well for me. At, at super training, we like to teach people to utilize the bar to get in the best position possible on all three lifts, bench, squat, deadlift. I like to lay flat. I like to experience what it would be like to lift in the shittiest way possible. So this would be flat back, my feet on the bench. I would have no leg drive and I would have a really long range of motion. My arms aren't really necessarily short. So I got to figure out a way to kind of almost make myself short and to make myself shorter and to gain stability and to decrease range of motion, we're gonna do what I talked about earlier. We're gonna get an arch. And so I'm gonna get an arch by pulling on the bar. I'm gonna pull my upper body up. I'm gonna leave my lower body and my hips where they are. And I'm gonna try to tuck my shoulder blades in the, in the back pocket by uh, pulling my elbows kind of down and in, flexing the rear delts and going like that. If you have a hard time doing that, you can have a spotter and see me go ahead and just kind of crunch me in as I go to pick myself up, go ahead and push down on my shoulders and push me, uh, push me like, like scoop under me and kind of push me. Scoop under I never had Ensema do it before, but yeah, you there you go. Boom. Oh, okay. Actually go, grab my traps. Grab your traps. Grab my traps and push me. Yep. Boom. Yep. Ah, and he I just, see. he just locked me into position. I see. So if you're having a hard time, like understanding what that means, you could have someone just kind of push you there. You can also just kind of get a good squeeze here and really just try to pull like you're trying to do a pull up, shove your shoulders down. The big mistake people make is they move their lower body down too and all they did was slide down on the bench. So leave your hips where they're at. In terms of where to have your eyes and all that kind of stuff, you want the barbell to be uh, about even with your eyes. For me, my cue was always to kind of have my, my head a little higher than where the bench pad is. And it's not going to stay there because I don't want to get tea bags. So I'm going to, I'm going to move my head strategically here. I'm going to tuck my shoulder blades into my back pocket. Like I said, have the chest up, put the legs down kind of gently because you don't want to unwind what you just did. Different, different people do different things with their foot position. Um, some people will kick their feet underneath them. This is fine to do as well. And I kind of like this one because I can flex my butt and drive my hips up a little bit without my butt coming off the bench. It would be totally impossible for me to get my butt off the bench in that position. Um, but for me, that was always a position that's like wound a little too tight and it would actually negatively impact my squat and my deadlift. So instead, I'll just kind of redo everything. I'll get position here. I'll just put my legs down here. I like to uh, have my heels touching the ground and even if you're someone that likes to be on your toes, you want to still uh, drive your heels towards the ground during the whole entire range of motion, even if your heels don't touch the ground. And that is because we wanna have kind of a slope down here. We wanna have our knee lower than our hip. That tells me that all this stuff is up in the air. And from here, we're gonna scoop the weight out of the rack. We're not gonna push it out of the rack because look, I just totally, Totally fucked myself over, so I'm gonna go back to here. Everything's tucked, everything's gonna be up. I wanna kind of keep everything up throughout the whole range of motion and press from here. And now at the bottom, if you kind of get it right, you should be able to kind of feel that you can almost like pull the weight into you and be really strong, and explosive as you go to push back up. Elbows aren't out like this, we're not benching to the neck, we're benching kind of below the nippy nips. Some people, your nipples might be down here. You want to bench just a little bit below your nipples, kind of more towards your sternum. Elbows are tucked into the sides and we're pressing up. As you go to bring the weight down, you want to bend the bar. Like we're trying to, we're trying to take the bar and like bend it around us. We're going to try to balance that on there, but you try to, try to uh, bend the bar around your body. Okay, when we do a deadlift, we're trying to do the same thing. We're trying to bend the bar around our body because you can deadlift more with a trap bar than you can with a regular bar. It's because it's on the sides of your hands and allows you to get in a better position to have better leverage. We do a squat, we're trying to bend the bar over our back as well. 
All these things are to create leverage and to get yourself in good position and to help create a lot of tightness. So again, we're here. Your legs are tight the whole time. You, you should be pushing with your legs, like you're doing like a static leg extension the whole time. Um, and that'll also help with stability. All right. I have Andrew bench press after that long explanation of bench oh, press. That's great. What a, what a gift to be able to learn how to bench press from Mark Bell. My, my goodness. Um, it's a good thing I waited 33 years to bench press because otherwise I might have done it wrong. So yeah, you're going to start with your feet up and now go ahead and try to head a position bit. your shoulders. Yeah. So like right here with the knurling might be about right. Do you do thumbless or you do full, full grip? You said grip it as tight as you yeah, can. Yeah, I like to have full grip on bench press, a suicide grip. It's suicide. called a suicide grip. Oh my. Okay. And then legs are down. I would bring your feet back up just for a second. Yeah. And let's see if we can have you bring your chest up more. So pull your upper body up completely and then tuck in. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Great. Yeah. Then now, legs down. Put your legs down. Okay. There we go. And go ahead. And oh, I see. And then you, you said you should want to shorten everything up and then you're kind of swinging it over. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And arch in the back is okay. Mm -hmm. Arch in the back is okay. And then it's. And Andrew's got tight hips, I can see. Yeah, his heels, my lower. See how his heels are. My lower back is screaming right now. Yep, yep. Not pain, but just, you know. And then I'm going to lower to, hard to hear. Yep. So you want to try to bring the elbows in closer to your body. Gosh, that, I'm like so tempted to go. There I go. see. So like here. Yep. And then you want to bring the bar a little lower. You want to bring the bar to there. Yeah. Wow. I never would have done it that way. Mm -hmm. And because he has fairly long arms, the main thing to kind of mess around with him would be to really play with uh, his grip a lot. Yeah, I think. Sometimes people with longer arms, sometimes they favor going in with a closer grip, and sometimes they, they uh, sometimes that kind of hurts their shoulder because the range of motion is far. So it just depends on the athlete. I think Encima likes to go with a, a mid to wider grip because it kind of bugs your clavicle a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, my AC joint had an injury with it, so I take a slightly wider grip than I used to. Actually, no, I take a more narrow grip now so I can stack more. Mm. If I'm too wide, it's harder to, yeah, harder to bring everything in. Yeah, if I'm too wide here, I can literally feel my AC, but you guys my grip, see, go ahead. I'm usually here, go ahead, what's up? You guys see how he kind of almost is like pulling himself towards the bar. That's, that's kind of what you want to do. I mean, if you kind of think about this as a row, then you can forget a lot of the stuff that I just said, and you can just practice trying to row with the barbell, because that's really all that it is. So if he's thinking in his head right now, all right, I'm not going to worry about the, all the, there's like a lot of mumbo jumbo with technique for bench pressing. I'm just going to row to like my sternum. Automatically puts your shoulders in the right position. And remember that cue that we give you guys all the time that we got from our buddy, Brian Carroll, who want to do, the reverse shrug. So ah. a shrug, the shrug is here, right? We want to do the reverse shrug and kind of have our arms down here because we want to have the arms kind of down, or the shoulder rather, down and in so the arms are staying uh, in the socket. Let's throw a 25 on there. So again, the technique is just kind of always the same. I'm gonna kind of lock everything in. One thing that's great about you, Mark, uh, is, you know, when you find guys like you who have bench pressed in upwards of, you know, six, seven, 800 pounds or more, you know, they have the humility to be able to throw just a quarter on each side and just do it. Um, yeah. That's probably a key to not getting injured. I mean, I think when you, when you encounter people who are really at the virtuosity, I would say, you know, there's unskilled, skilled mastery, and then there's virtuosity, right? And you guys have virtuosity in this then they're comfortable taking a couple quarter plates. They're not worried whether or not anyone's going to see them doing this, mm -hmm. right? You know. I actually have always started with the bar. Have you really? Always, always started I, with yeah, the bar. I think that's good for people to hear Very because spotted. I hear about more rotator cuff injuries and stuff from poor form and people loading far too much weight on the bar. Um, and I'd rather spend more time warming up with lighter weights than to spend time warming up with heavier stuff. You know, I just, I just need a little bit of practice with the lighter stuff and then my body gets warm and I feel good usually. Okay, I feel like if I can drive my neck into the bench, that's gonna give me some stability. Um, 
And then where's, am I, uh, stack the bones, you said. You don't want to be here, because then right. flipping your wrist back, got it. Yeah, some people kind of have the weight in their fingers rather than in their, than in their hand. And I want to engage the legs too. Yeah, let's have you put the weight back just for a second. Mm -hmm. And let's see if we can have you maybe get your, your legs out a little wider. I know you're, you have some discomfort in your back. Uh, look, I've always had a little bit of right side sciatica that, that sometimes flares up, but that tells me that I haven't been training my back enough. One thing that you can do is uh, maybe hold on to the bar for a yep. second and uh, go ahead and kick one leg back underneath you a bit. And you might be able to get a stretch in your hip. You might be able to, mm -hmm. get, your hip to, might be able to get your hip to relax a little bit. Is that, is that too much or is that okay? I mean, it's pushing it. Yeah, you're noticing that whole hip is really tight. Now try on the other side. And I ran yesterday in the hills. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, everything's locked up, but so leave your um, so leave your feet more where they are. Then. Okay. Just go a little wider with the, with the stance. Okay. Because this is still totally acceptable for those of you that that might have some tight hips. This is this is uh, technique right here is totally fine. So you get the shoulders organized again, and go ahead and push your knees out a little bit, almost like you're. There oh, yeah. you go. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, that feels comfy. You guys kind of see how the cue just kind of boom, put them, snap them right in position. We want the elbows in even more. I see. So tuck them in close like that. Yep. Oh, so I can use the lats? Yep. yep. Just channel the seam for lats there. Yep. Yeah, that bodybuilder front spread there. Lat spread. Well, that feels nice and strong. That's actually the first time I've ever felt my front delt engage. Maybe rack it for a second. Let's just see what it looks like with a little bit closer of a grip, too. Are you an exhale on effort kind I think of? You, yeah, it's yeah. fine. You can do that. Doesn't matter. Um, you can bring the weight down probably even lower. And now what I want you to concentrate on is I want you to pull the weight. Pull the weight towards you. Pull the weight towards you. Pull the weight towards you. Yeah, see how your chest was up so much right there? Do it again. Same thing. Yep, there we go. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's like you're fighting for position at the bottom. I know it's weird and kind it of feels uncomfortable. feels good, though. It kind of stretches your yeah. shoulder a bit, too, though, and you're like, mm, I don't know if I... Yeah. I don't know if I dig that. No, but that feels like uh, an itch I've always wanted to scratch. Didn't know it, so there that feels go. good. Huh? I think I've been for long, whenever I've. I said I've never bench pressed, but right. anytime I've gone to it, it always felt like a little pinch in the shoulder. It always felt like I was up here. Yeah. Did not. Yeah. Okay. You're trying to. You're trying to cover. Uh, you're trying to uh, imitate Zaragoza over there. How so? <laughs> I was just kidding. He was saying he'd bench like this. Oh, okay. <laughs> what do you mean by pulling the weight and from where it is but pulling a curve? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, it's, you know, you might have a training partner who might give you a little bit of resistance and you might want to pull it like that just so you get the cue. You can also set up uh, some bands in in a rack and do like a, uh, do like a reverse band bench press, which would be like a, a basically, basically a row um a lying down row with a barbell um it's kind of hard to describe uh it's been a while since i've tried it but let me let me let me see let me see if i can do it um you're you're literally just trying to like pull pull the weight in towards you with your back muscles which is weird because you're actually literally using like almost all of your muscles that are in the front of your body but your pecs and lats, they, they work together. Your lats are gonna statically contract. Um, they're gonna they're gonna kind of widen out as you go to contract your pecs. Like it just happens naturally. As you're watching in SEMA in this tank top, you can kind of see the lats are kind of uh, popping out. And whenever a bodybuilder does that, that front lat spread, they're really just almost just flexing their pecs. And you'll see the lat come out. And sometimes the guy's lats are so big it, it goes all the way underneath uh, their armpits, all the way out by their shoulders, all the way down into their hips. So we want to try to figure out ways to engage the back. We normally figure out ways to engage the back when we're training our back, not necessarily training our chest, but uh, in this case, we're really trying to work on pulling the weight down. So let me see what I can do here. See if I can. It's almost like uh, pulling cables. Like yeah. Reverse cable. Fly. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But your hands are fixed, so it's. Yep. So when I got good at this stuff, I was actually able to do this with a lot of weight. And I was able to kind of like outrun the eccentric portion of the lift. I was able to kind of uh, just move fast and that way I could pause the weight and get the lift over with.
so it takes a long time to like you know figure out how to be explosive in a movement if you're not good in a movement I, I wouldn't recommend that you start that way but that was just kind of me trying to use my back as soon as the weight is out and in a good position for me I'm gonna drive the elbows inward from here is right where I'm gonna squeeze my elbows almost trying to squeeze my elbows together back behind my body which I definitely don't have the ability to do uh, but almost like a swimmer driving their elbows back behind their body when they do their warm-ups when they're stretching before they do their event that's kind of almost what I'm thinking of I'm thinking of dropping this weight and having it pull right through me but obviously I don't want to drop the weight on my chest that would be ridiculous but once I get to about here I'm pulling in to me and through me and so when it, if I did a pause in a competition It'll look like that. That pause is actually just me squeezing and then chucking the weight back up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've seen you do that with three plates when you were heavier. At like you've done that with like yeah you I've yeah that with, with, yeah like five plates yeah, yeah. you just just drop it's it. Fucking <laughs> it's weird. I never understood how you bench like that. I could I could never do that. Well, because it's a, it's. You know, if you, if you can, like, forget about this part, which looks totally unsafe, once I'm at the bottom is when I really tighten up and I coil up. It's almost like somebody strategically rebounding on a squat. Mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. it's like... So it's almost kind of like dive bombing. It's like dive bombing But it's a, a controlled dive bomb. It's a controlled dive bomb. Because mm -hmm. I can kind of feel my back push into it. And the weights that I missed were just... They were weights that, like, when I went to come back up, I almost didn't drop it fast enough, probably because I was scared. It was 600 pounds and as soon as that 600 pound load was like registered in my body which was once which was when i got three quarters done with the weight mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't right when i unwrapped it i didn't feel it hardly at all when i unwrapped it i felt some of it but i dropped it i heaved it and when all that piled up and registered in my brain and my pec went boom i used to torn your pec yeah a couple times yeah what is it and your uh bench press pr is what my best bench in a bench shirt, which you've probably seen bench shirts before, is 854. And I did a 578 pound bench press raw. Raw is just, yeah, just a t shirt and wrist wraps, basically. Yeah. Amazing. At what age? Uh, Mid 30s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably 38 or something. And you've been a, training for more than 10 years. Yeah, I started training. I was really young. So I, at this point, I've been training for like, like right now, I've been training like 31, 32 years. It's great. I always say the best way to get really good at something is do it for 10 years. Yeah. And then do it for 10 more. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then if you want to get really, really good, do it for 10 more. Then you start yeah. realizing you don't know anything at some certain right. point. Yep. You're like, fuck. Yep. It's beautiful. It's well, it's nice to have done some dangerous shit. And it's, uh, at least for now, it's behind me. I think you probably did more dangerous shit. I... Probably that was dumber, though. Uh, I almost died during an, uh, an experiment from my lab we could talk about. Should yeah. we do a slight unrack here? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, me, so yeah, Andrew, I'm going to do yeah. is... Okay, so I'm, I'm going with, uh, let's see, we decided it was um, legs down and wider, so that's helping for so sure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hop on rack because what happens right now is as you're unracking, your mm -hmm. shoulder's coming out. Okay. I'm having to get it back. So remember, like, you want to keep your shoulders compressed. So what if I'm going to do, mm -hmm. I'm going to say three, two, one, I'm going to slightly help you pull the bar out. Okay. So I'm not going to go like that, yep. but you're going to pull the bar out mm -hmm. as I lightly unrack it. Okay, okay. on one. Yeah. Your shoulders kind of back. Okay. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one, up. Yep. Out, pull, pull, pull. Pull it down. Pull it yeah, towards you. Okay. Elbows in. Oh, yeah. I feel stable. Yep. A little, little jitter down there, but. Oh, you're good. That's great. Your form is not going to get any better than that today. That's awesome. I want to try one more thing. It's a racket, real quick. Mm hmm. Okay. So when we unrack it this yep. time, because remember, I don't want you to push into the bar and unrack. I right. want you to keep your shoulder. I kind of want you to pull the bar okay, down. Okay, it's just a scap roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just but a scap roll. Don't yeah. go like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That didn't seem a hand the weight to you. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay, so three, yep. three, two, one, up, pull. There we go. Yep. Good. Good. Nice. Something you can do is do, do one more rep. Go ahead and pause it and stay on your chest. Go ahead and pull your elbows in harder. 
Yep, and stay right there. You can just practice just that. Mm, yep, just sit right there for a couple hours. Yeah. Just for some of you that are new, that are like really working on it, like after your training session's over, you don't even need hardly any weight on the bar. You could have a 25 or even just like a 10 on the side. Some weight would be good. Just sit there and, and just kind of squeeze and kind of learn it, just like you would in a squat, just like you should be doing in a deadlift. I think that this sport's not practiced enough. L lifting weights is not practiced Oh no, because enough. people get in there like, you know, and I do, think you know you can get a great workout with 45 yeah. minutes an amazing workout with 45 minutes but you have to learn the movements i mean right. it takes i mean again i feel so blessed to learn this from you guys because you really know what you're doing but also there's a ton of bad information in yeah. gyms i go start with you know it's uh yeah lifting is a, it's a yeah. practice and other sports like jujitsu or wrestling or soccer or football like there's a lot of drills people right. do a lot of drills and then when it comes to lifting for some reason, I don't see anyone really drilling. Uh, although people will stretch and do some stuff. Sort of. But I'd like to see people drill on their squats. Like just when you're done with a workout, try squatting with your stance like this. Try squatting with your stance like that. Um, you know, try squatting with your toes pointed way out. Try squatting with your toes straight ahead. Try a box squat. Try uh, squatting with elevated heels. Try with a flat shoe. Just anything and everything. You know, mess around with your hands. Maybe you only have two fingers on the bar, you know, and you've got your elbows underneath you. Maybe you're, you're in close. I mean, there's a lot of combinations that you can get into. And I'd like to see people practice that more so they can find what really feels efficient for them. Do you recommend if somebody's uh, starting out or any stage that they just take one day, go into the gym for fun and great. just play with really light weights just to try and find the, the, um, the movements Absolutely. and the positioning that that serves them best. Absolutely, and with be no great. intention of overloading the muscles. Just yeah, yeah, no, that would be perfect. All right, we're gonna get you into a slingshot now. Have you try one of these guys out? I've seen these, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, try them. Try the blue one. Probably It'll probably be good. What do we got here? Yeah, this should fit. So what's the? the... You want to stick them in the red one? I see your face. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can see it in his face. Uh, so this is the slingshot. Mm -hmm. Supportive upper body device, bench press, push up dips. We're using it right here on the push up, and it's going to help you with your form. Mm -hmm. This slides up, it goes on the tricep. It's a training bicep. tool, or you use it for training um, tool, yep. Yeah. But, you, but do you use it in uh, trying to hit PRs? You also? can, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, most people yeah. get excited and they want to load the weight up with a ton of weight, but it was not necessarily designed for that. It was designed more for training than anything I else. I see. Yeah, you can feel right away. Yeah, the rear, I'm wanting rear delts like Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs, right? It's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> not gonna happen. Go ahead and uh, kind of pull your elbows back, and yeah, just get a little feel for mm -hmm. it while you're standing here. That feels good. But it's you good. see how like it automatically just him doing uh, some of these things, how he already looks like he's in a good solid bench position. So that's part of it. It's gonna help pull your elbows in, mm -hmm. uh, and, and then it's also gonna that position I was talking about at the bottom, where your elbows are pinned back behind your body. Mm -hmm. You think about the things the human body is designed to do. I don't know how well designed we are for a bench press. It actually kind of seems like a crap exercise when you when you kind of break it down. Having that much weight with both arms back behind your body, I mean, it's very clear we're able to throw and we're able to punch and we're able to do certain things with our arms. But that motion is just uh, unique to a bench press sure. kind of only. Yeah. A push up is nothing similar to a bench press. The amount of weight that you have to push. Right, and in a, in a proper push up, you're. Um, sealing all the leaks yeah. to sort of uh right pavel satsuma would say it far far better than i would mm -hmm. in a really incredible yeah. uh, accent too um but when you're plugging all those leaks yeah. and here it's harder to plug the leaks unless you have the hip mobility the other thing is i noticed with this i can really feel it in my middle trap mm. which yeah. feels really good i've always had a hard time yeah, engaging feeling, the yeah. middle trap yeah. that the, the yeah. kind of center of the back especially as it gets down like towards the middle of the back so yeah the, well said let's have you try Let's uh, get the bar to the front or this part. Yeah. Let's just roll it there. Oh, yeah. I see. Right. Okay. And is this an appropriate place on my elbows? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Ready? Three. Let Let's me brace go. my neck. I actually like to push back against it with yep. my neck. Yep. Okay. okay. Right. We'll just get three. Yep. Two, one, up. Out. There mm -hmm. we go. Ah, oh, feels good. Yeah, you're gonna blast off at the bottom. And this yeah. is a great way to learn how to do that pull that I was talking about earlier. That's part of how I was able to learn how to be so explosive was to use slingshots and to really pull weights right through the slingshot almost. So I notice I have a tendency to roll it back. See my wrist yeah. want to go back. Mm -hmm. You're saying keep it stacked. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's... 
<laughs> yeah, we don't care what you have a tendency to do. We want you to do it the right way. <laughs> that elbow seems to want to come out more. Yep. There you go. Nice. <laughs> Getting reps on reps. That feels good. One thing uh, Andrew was bringing up there is he was talking about uh, his wrist rolling back. You know, you don't want to hold the weight in your fingers mm. during a bench press. You want to really try to hold the weight in like the meat of your hand. So you want to squeeze. You want to really squeeze the bar. Like when when uh, I was lifting my heaviest weights, my hands actually looked like pancakes. They were just so freaking fat. The the sides of them had just a little bit more muscle mass to them from like squeezing the bar and really making sure that those weights didn't uh, go back in here. And then also, if you're to think about it in terms of like trying to produce a lot of force, you know, if you were to throw a punch at somebody and you connected with your bones stacked, that would probably be a pretty good punch. But if I came in like this, I mean, it's probably, <laughs> probably not gonna be uh, all that effective. So you really wanna try to squeeze the bar. That'll help engage the forearm and help engage the arm to a point where you should be able to kind of hold it in place. I think we covered everything for bench press. Let's uh, move in just a little bit of uh, browning it up with a little, a little arm pump, then we'll roll right into the podcast. <laughs>